Hare Krishna, good morning dear devotees from Sri Jagannath Puri Dham. These are our daily adventures in Srimad Bhagavatam. And today is the, uh, today is the auspicious appearance day of Sri Bhakti Vigna Vinasana and Srimad Bhagavan. And so we had some special kata that we wanted to do, we had some thoughts about it. I'd like to just share with you a little meditation that I had this morning, <laughs> uh, which uh, we wrote something about on Facebook. That is that uh, today there's a cyclone hitting West Bengal and also it's affecting us here in Orissa. And I don't know whether or not we're going to be able to uh, continue our live streaming or not because the, heavy, the winds are really heavy outside and, and uh, it may Turn on, it may switch off the electricity or something. So this particular cyclone, the name of it is Yasa. And someone this morning, they wrote to me and they said, be careful of Yasa. And I wrote back to him and I said, if we take shelter of Yasa, then what can Yasa do? There won't be any problem. So the word Yasa in Sanskrit is synonymous also for the word Yasa. Uh -huh. Yasa and Yasa. Uh -huh. And... Uh, Yasoda is a different thing. That that's a completely different meaning. But yasa in Sanskrit means to work hard or to, to cause trouble. And that's why they <laughs> I think they're calling the cyclone yasa is causing trouble. Now the word vyasa has a number of meanings. One one meaning of vyasa is a great sage Vyasadeva. He compiled the Vedic literature and compiled Srimad Bhagavatam. Another meaning of vyas is to sever, to cut, or, or to separate, take away. Mm -hmm. So Vyasadeva, therefore, he severs or cuts the troubles that are caused by yasa. Okay? And, but another meaning of vyas in, in the dictionary is vyas is a Brahmin who speaks the Puranas in public. And another not so common meaning of vyas is a heavy bow that weighs a hundred palas. So the conclusion is that if we take shelter of Vyas by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from Brahman Vaishnavas, then like a powerful bow that shoots an arrow, these topics will cut the troubles of Vyas. Therefore, if we take shelter of Vyas, what can Vyas do? No problem. So we, uh, on this day, we want to say some prayers and, and give some meditation to Lord Nishringadev. Om Ugram Vidam Mahavishnum Jalantam Sarvato Mukam Nishingham Bishanam Padram Mithyu Mithyam Namam Yaham This verse, first of all, is an important verse also here in Jagannath Puri Dham. Many, many things we can say about Lord Nishringadev. Today we'd like to say something about Gaudiya Vaishnavas and the worship of Lord Nishringadev and is very much uh, involved with the, work, the uh, mood of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, but not in the way that uh, everyone always thinks and not in the way that uh, some of the Hindus may think about Lord Nishringadev. And we should understand the Gaudiya worship of Lord Nishringadev. And as I just teased, I will go ahead and mention this. There is an uh, intimate connection with Lord Nishringadev and Jagannath Puri and Lord Jagannath. When Maharaj Indrajumna, the, uh, excuse me, the king who originally installed uh, Lord Jagannath, he was a devotee of Lord Nishringadev, and he According to the Skanda Puran, he offered certain prayers to Lord Nishringadev. And in the place uh, which is known as Indradumna Sarovar today, he performed a great horse sacrifice. And he was worse wanting to have Lord Jagannath appear. And Lord Jagannath did appear on the day that, that we know of as Snan Purnima, which therefore is the appearance day of Lord Jagannath. But the way that he first appeared was as Lord Nishringadev. And therefore they say that in such a yuga, the mantra that they used to worship Lord Jagannath 
was the Nishinga Maha Mantra. Om Ugram Vidam Maha Vishnum Jalantam Sarvato Mukam Nishingham Bishanam Padram Mityu Mityam Namam Yaham. And now they worship Lord Jagannath. I don't know for hundreds of years or maybe a thousand years or more. They've been worshiping him with a, a Gopal, Gopinath mantra. But still, they worship Sudarshan with the Nishinga Maha Mantra to this day, according to the, the Pandas and Puri. So the, one of our main theses is that we want to uh, speak about today is how the Lord, there's an intimate connection between the appearance of the devotee and the appearance of the Lord. So because someone may become confused and they may think then, then Lord Jagannath is Lord Nishringadev. And certainly there's, there's a strong pramana to support that because Lord Jagannath uh, first manifested the form of Nishringadev. But if we study the Bhagavatam in the third canto, chapter 9, text 11, there's a very important verse which also appears in the Adi Lila of Chaitanya Charitamrita, those verses which Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami gives us in uh, the Adi Lila of Chaitanya Charitamrita are very foundational verses for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And so 3911, a very famous verse, describes Twam Bhakti Yoga Paribhavita Ritsuroja Ase Shutek Shita Patona Nunata Pum Sam Yad Yadia Tadurugaya Vibhava Yanti Tat Tad Vapu Pranayase Sadhanugrahaya So let's read Srila Prabhupada's uh, translation. He says, O oh my Lord, your devotees can see you through the eyes by the process of bona fide hearing, and thus their hearts become cleansed, and you take your seat there. You are so merciful to your devotees that you manifest yourself in the particular eternal form of transcendence in which they always think of you. Tut tut vapu, tut tut, that particular or that same tut tut vapu, that form. Pranaya say, and the Lord manifests uh, Sadhanu Grahaya out of his mercy for the devotees. Uh, uh, he manifests in the form that the Lord, the devotees are, ma are meditating on. Uh, as the Chaitanya Bhagavat describes, J Rupa Chinti Dasi Sehi Rupa Hoy, that he appears in the form that his devotee desires to see. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, in one article which he titled The Associates of Sri Chaitanya in the uh, uh, Sajjana Toshini, he says there, the associates of Sri Krishna Chaitanya are constituents of himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says that uh, when Sri Krishna Chaitanya was pleased to manifest his appearance in this mundane plane, all the six constituents of himself also necessarily made their appearance as part and parcel of himself. He says, the appearance of Godhead in this world implies the co-appearance of all his divine paraphernalia. Godhead must not be conceived as in any way separable from his entourage. God had shown if any of his paraphernalia is a delusion. In the same way, the appearance of divine paraphernalia involves the appearance of the divinity. The two are distinct yet inseparable forms of the One Supreme. So many questions come before us today. This is, we Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they generally fast on this day to dusk. And why do they fast until dusk? Anapayani Radha, can you tell us why they, they fast until dusk? You don't know, it's just, it's just what they told you in the temple, so you just do it? As I remember, Lord is your head up, he appeared. Okay, so Anapayani Radha, she's, she's telling us that uh, we fast until dusk because that's when Lord Nishringadeva appeared. Wrong answer. 
We know from the Vishnu Purana, from the Shringa Purana, and different Puranas, including the Bhagavat, that after Lord Nishingadeva appeared, he, he killed all the armies of Hiranyakashipu. He fought with Hiranyakashipu. He scared the heck out of all the, the, uh, the uh, demonesses who all had abortions at that time. It seems that there was some time, although how much time was given, it's not exactly mentioned. And indeed, it could have been just one brief moment. But we know for sure that dusk, the time that we fast to, is maybe, maybe not the appearance <coughs> time of Lord Nishringadev. Probably not. But we do know that it's the disappearance time of Hiranyakashipu. <laughs> and so he's also the devotee of the Lord. He's Jai in, in uh, the spiritual world. And so there's an intimate connection between the appearance of the Lord and the appearance of the devotee. So, uh, in effect, we're also celebrating the disappearance day of Hiranyakashipu. <laughs> Hiranyakashipu disappearance ki jai. So, a question comes, how is it that uh, uh, Hiranyakashipu, who was not a very nice fellow, how is it that he had such a son as Prahlad Maharaj? How can we understand that? In the Bhagavatam, the third canto, chapter 16, text 35, I'd like to read you something Srila Prabhupada describes about the importance of the Garbhadhan Sangskar. He says, while conceiving a child, one's mind must be very sober and devotional. For this purpose, the Garbhadhan Sangskar is recommended in the Vedic scriptures. If the mind of the father is not sober, the semen discharged will not be very good. Thus the living entity wrapped in the matter produced from the father and mother will be demoniac like Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. Okay. So then the question comes, if he's so bad, if Hiranyakashipu is so bad, how is it that he got such a great Vaishnav, Prahlad Maharaj, as his son? Mm -hmm. So in the Nishinga Purana, there's a conversation between Mark and Dea Rishi, who describes this to Maharaj Sahasranika. This is from the 41st chapter of the Nishinga Purana. And it's described there that one day, uh, Hiranyakashipu, he was going out of the house, and his wife Kayadu asked him, my dear husband, where are you going? He said, well, I've got to go to the office. I've got to go to work. What is the work for Hiranyakashipu? He goes to perform some great austerities. So, just as a footnote, we can understand that austerities are not the goal or the purpose of Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Our purpose is bhakti. And sometimes devotees perform some austerities, like Anishinga Chaturdasi, they'll fast until dusk. But their purpose is to please the Lord. Their purpose is to get bhakti. Their purpose is to overcome the anarthas in the heart so that they can uh, get bhakti. But in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Srila Rupa Goswami, he describes that austerities can actually be detrimental to bhakti because they make the heart hard. Uh, so Hiranyakashipu, he's doing austerities. And, but his purpose was to become very powerful so that he could have some sense pleasure, so that he could become famous and, and, and opulent. So he went to the forest to perform austerities. And then Shinga Purana says that when he set out, there was all kinds of different omens indicating that it wasn't, it wasn't going to work. There were earthquakes, that there was uh, fire seen in all directions, that there were, there were donkeys braying and, and different things. But Hiranyakashipu, who's so proud, just ignored all those inauspicious omens and very intoxicated with pride, he started from Mount Kailash, the place of Lord Shiva. And so then he got near the peak of Mount Kailash, and he started doing really intense austerities to, so he could get some demoniac booms, boons. And when Lord Brahma saw what Hiranyakashipu was doing, he started becoming nervous. He thought, man, this guy is going to do something really, really bad. So how can I stop him? What can I do? He was worried. And just at that time, Nard Muni appeared. And Nard Muni 
he's by nature he's a great Vaishnava, part of Dukkha Dukhi Kripam Bhuti. The nature of a Vaishnava is they're they're compassionate and they feel distress and they see someone else who feels distress. And so when Nard Muni saw the distress of his father, he said, My dear father, you're you're a devotee of Krishna. Lord Narayan, why are you worrying? Those people who meditate on, on Krishna and Govinda, they don't have to worry about anything. Father, don't worry. He saw that even after he preached to him like that, generally it, it doesn't work very good when this, the child tries to preach to the parents. Uh -huh. So Narad Muni saw it. Just, he said, don't worry, Dad, I'll do something. Hmm? Because telling him that just, you just chant Hare Krishna, sometimes that's not enough. <laughs> we we need to have we need to see some GBC action. We need to see something from the temple president. We want something practical. Huh? Actually, chanting Hare Krishna is enough, and we'll see that uh, that Nard Muni he's preaching to Kayadu. He's preaching to Prahlad Maharaj in the womb, and because of that blessing of Nard Muni, Prahlad Maharaj had this attitude that uh, that this bhakti. Huh? Is sarva karma krita hoy, that all that I have to do is perform bhakti and everything else will be taken care of. I don't have to practice martial arts and learn karate to defend myself from my father or anything like that. I just chant Hare Krishna. So anyway, uh, Nard Muni saw that Lord Brahma wasn't impressed with his suggestion to just chant Hare Krishna and everything will be okay. So then Nard Muni told him, he said, look, Dad, it's all right. I'll do something to stop this demon. And he took his friend, Parvat Muni, with him. And they went, they left that place absorbed in thoughts of Krishna. They're about to do a very important service for Krishna. And what they did, they, they t assumed the form of birds. Don't underestimate birds. Huh? Two small sparrows. And they went to Kailash, where Hiranya Kashipu was very vigorously doing his penance. And they landed in the branch of a tree. And they started doing kirtan. And then the Shringa Purana says that Parvat Muni, who Nard Muni asked him to come with him because there's more strength when you do Sankirtan. Uh -huh. And Sankirtan means Samyak Kirtan or complete Kirtan, which has a number of meanings. Samyak Kirtan, according to Jiva Goswami and Bhakti Sandarbha, means complete Kirtan. It means Kirtan with more than one person. Therefore, it's Sankirtan. But it also means Samyak Kirtan or complete Kirtan because it means Prema Kirtan. And so he brought Parvat Muni with him because Parvat Muni is also a great devotee. And so these two great devotees started doing kirtan there on the branch of that tree in the form of little birds. And then the Shringa Purana says they started singing, Namo Narayanaya, Namo Narayanaya, Namo Narayanaya. And then they got quiet. And Hirani Kashipu, <laughs> who was working really hard uh -huh, so that he could get some demoniac boons, he could become very powerful, when he heard that kirtan of these two great devotees in the form of birds, he became really agitated. Uh -huh, and he gave up his, his meditation, his, his austerities, uh -huh, and he picked up his bow and arrow and put an arrow to the bow, and the two birds smiled at him with big smiles, <laughs> what birds can do, and they flew away. Uh -huh. And Hirani Kashipu, who by this time was having a really bad day, uh -huh. he was so agitated he couldn't get absorbed in his, in his austerities and penances, so he left that hermitage there, and he went back to his city. And Kayadu there was waiting, and when Hirani Kashipu arrived, it so happened that Kayadu, her monthly cycle had just ended. She'd just taken bath. And she saw her husband. She said, my, my, you're back early from the office. Huh? What, what's happening? I, I thought you were going to do penance for 10,000 years. You just, you've come back early. And what's going on? Please tell me. And Hirani Kashipu was really agitated. He said, you don't know what's going on. Those demigods, they sent these two rascal birds, and I was doing my austerities very nicely. And these two birds, they started reciting this mantra. They started singing this nonsense kirtan. And she said, what did they sing? And he says, they were singing, Namo Narayanaya. Uh -huh. 
and I heard them sing that two or three times. I became really angry, and they went to shoot an arrow at them, and those birds, they flew away. And, and, and anyway, I, I was so disturbed, I couldn't do anything more, so I came back here. And then Markandeya Rishi describes that about that time, Hiranyakashipu kind of noticed his wife. She looks awfully good. And he became a little agitated. And so he made some proposition to her, and they engaged in sex life. And as a result of that sex life, Kayadu got in her womb the great devotee, Prahlad Maharaj. And Markandeya Rishi, he explained to Maharaj Sahasranika that because, first of all, Hiranyakashipu heard that kirtan, Namo Narayanaya, from Narad Muni and Parvat Muni, and then just before he uh, united with his wife, Hiranyakashipu repeated that same mantra to his wife, Kayadu. And the consequence was that they had a child, uh, who became a great devotee of the Lord. Huh? So we shouldn't think that, uh, that oh, I can do like that also, just go with my wife and, and just, just chant some mantra beforehand. Uh, one of the, the types of nama bas to that we can uh, do the chanting of the holy name is known as halen or neglectful. And this is the, the nama bas that Hiranyakashipu was chanting. However, if a devotee chance thinking that, that all I can just chant Hare Krishna and everything is okay, then they don't get that Nama Bas, rather they get the result of Nama Parad. Now it's also interesting to note that in the uh, Nishinga Purana, as well as in several other different literatures, including the uh, Hari Bhakti Vilas, uh, there's some mention uh, how Prahlad, he once asked the Lord, how is it that I got bhakti to you? Now, we know that he got bhakti because he was in the womb hearing from Narad Muni. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says a very important thing. Let's go back to this le le article that he wrote. He says, the appearance of Godhead in this world implies the co-appearance of all his divine paraphernalia. Huh? In the same way, the appearance of the divine paraphernalia involves the appearance of the divinity. So you can't separate the two. When Krishna appeared in, as in the form of the Maha Mantra in the West, but you can't separate the appearance of Krishna from the appearance of Srila Prabhupada. And you can't separate the appearance of Krishna from the appearance of Prabhupada. You can't separate the appearance of Prabhupada from the appearance of Krishna. When Srila Prabhupada went to the West, when he went to America, he brought Krishna with him. So when Srila Prabhupada appeared, it indicated the appearance of Krishna. So similarly, when Prahlad Maharaj appeared, it indicated also the appearance of Lord Nishringadev. And But something came before that also, and that's Nard Muni. Nard Muni was preaching to Prahlad Maharaj, in the Nishinga Purana, it's described that Prahlad asked the Lord, how is it I have such a bad wife, excuse me, such a bad, didn't have a wife at that time, he's a little boy, but I have such a bad father, and how is it that I uh, uh, was able to develop bhakti to you? And so then the Lord Nishinga, they've told him a story from a long, long time before, that in, in the place known as Avanti Desh, there was a Brahman, his name was Basu Sharma, and he was a very learned pundit in all the Shastras, and he had a very good wife, his name was Sushila. And she was very chaste, very devoted, she had all good qualities, she was very, very devoted to her husband. And Basu Sharma and Sushila, they had five sons. Four of them were really good. They were very learned, they were very obedient to their father, but the youngest one, his name was Vasudev, and he was different. And Vasudev was a budmas, he was a rascal, he had very bad character. He's very attached to prostitutes. And one day, this Vasudev uh, was with his favorite prostitute, and they got in a big argument. And they had a quarrel. And they both became so disturbed that they both fasted the whole day. Now, that day happened to be Nishinga Chaturdasi. Now, you may... Uh, we'll come back to that. And by their fasting on that day, 
that prostitute took birth in her next life as an apsara and swarga lok, and then she became a devotee. We don't know anything, I don't know who, what devotee she became. And that Vasudev became Prahlad Maharaj. Similarly, uh, it's said there in the, the uh, Nishinga Purana that uh, because of this day, Lord Shiva, he got the strength, because he observed some austerity on that day, he got the strength to kill the demon Tripurasura. So someone may question, well, how is it that this is Nishinga Chaturdasi, but Lord Nishingadeva hasn't even appeared yet. In fact, it's not until the next life that this Vasudeva is going to be, take birth as Prahlad Maharaj. But that day is an eternal day. Eternally, Lord Nishingadeva appears. So Prahlad uh, appeared in the womb of Kayadu because of the, uh, the kirtan that, that uh, Hiranyakashipu heard from Narad Muni and from Parvat Muni. And then because Hiranyakashipu repeated that mantra to, to his wife before they engaged in relations with each other, he got the son Prahlad Maharaj uh, within the womb. And then we know that Narad Muni, who caused the birth of Prahlad in the sense that he chanted that Namo Narayanaya mantra before Hiranyakashipu, then he went and he spoke Srimad Bhagavatam, he preached to Kayadu. And Prahlad Maharaj was in the womb and he was hearing that. So when Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati, he says that the appearance of the Lord indicates the appearance of the devotees. And he says that the Guru is the embodiment of the manifestation of the divinity to the pure receptive spiritual essence of the disciple. So the Guru is the form of the manifestation of the divinity to the pure receptive spiritual essence of the disciple. Now we've not heard how Kayadu became a great devotee. Now there's no doubt that she became a devotee because her son was such a great devotee and she's also married to Jai, it was pretty good. But she couldn't really understand, she wasn't so much interested in what uh, uh, Narad Muni was speaking, mm -hmm. but Prahlad Maharaj in the womb. He had this pure, receptive spiritual essence. He was very, very eager to hear that, you know, this kata. He says, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta says, the cognitive faculty, the ability to perceive of the individual soul can have no ground to stand upon unless the divinity himself condescends to be the legs as well as the ground on which he is to stand to function at all. In other words, the the ability of the individual soul to perceive things has there's no has no ability unless the Lord Himself condescends to become the legs as well as the ground on which He's a stand to function at all. This function of the divinity is performed by the Guru. So Krishna is the Guru is a manifestation of Krishna, and how is he a manifestation of Krishna? Krishna appears before the sincere, the pure, receptive spiritual essence of the disciple, understanding the, the desire of the devotee, understanding the desire of Prahlad Maharaj, who in the Bhagavatam, he describes, he uh, describes who his Ishtadev is. Matirana Krishna Padatasvatova. This is Bhagavatam 7.530, Prahlad Maharaj, he plays, he says that inclination toward Krishna is never aroused in people who are, uh, they have uh, some addiction to sense gratification and materialistic life. So his Ishtadev really is Krishna. But he's also perhaps meditating on, on the Lord to protect him, and so he appears in the form of Lord Nishringadev. But he appears before Paladmars by the mercy of Narad Muni. Mm -hmm. And Narad Muni appears, he's the manifestation of the Lord, Guru Saksha Dharit Vinasta Master Shastri. And why is he the manifestation of the Lord? Because he gives the Lord. And Narad Muni gave the Lord in the form of that mantra, Namona Rayanaya. And he gave the Lord in the form of that Krishna Kata. And it was able to be received by the pure receptive spiritual essence of Prahlad Maharaj. Mm -hmm. And Lord Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati, 
He says, as a matter of fact, the divinity actually reveals him only to himself. What does that mean? The Lord only reveals himself to himself. Well, when the devotee takes that mantra, when the devotee hears that Krishna Kata, we often quote this verse at Rupa Namashrita Vishta, spoken by, uh, written by uh, Srila Sanatana Goswami and his Krishna Lila Stava, that when the devotee man meditates on the form of the Lord, the Rup, or the name of the Lord, and these two things are things the devotee has gotten from Guru, when he, uh, Ashrita, he takes shelter of those things, then Avishta, the Lord, enters into the devotee. So the Lord entered into Prahlad Maharaj. The Lord entered into Srila Prabhupada by the mercy of him, by, by chanting this mantra that he's gotten from his guru, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, by meditating on the Krishna Kata that he'd gotten from his guru, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And similarly, Prahlad Maharaj, by hearing his Namo Narayanaya verse, by uh, doing this fasting, previously in the Shinga Chaturdasi, he got Bhakti Ummukhi Sakriti. It wasn't Jiva Goswami and Bhakti Sandarbha. He distinguishes between Bhakti and uh, Agatha Sakriti. Agatha Sakriti is when someone just does something and they don't know the reason that, why they're doing it. They don't, they don't understand that dancing in the kirtan, they're drunk and they meet the devotees chanting Hare Krishna on the streets of St. Petersburg or someplace, and they go and they start dancing with the devotees, they don't know that that's the beginning of their good fortune. They're just a drunkard, and they're with a prostitute or something. They don't know that their good fortune is coming. That's Agatha Sukriti. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur calls it Bhakti Unmukhi Sukriti. It's Sukriti which leads to Bhakti. And so uh, Jiva Goswami in Bhakti Sandarbha says when someone practices Bhakti uh, Agatha Sukriti, the result is they may go, and he gives some examples, just like the crow which, which broke a wing and was being chased after by a dog, and the crow was running away from the dog because it couldn't fly, and it was running, it happened to be running around the temple of Lord Vishnu. And finally the dog captured the crow and killed it, and the crow went to Prapanchika Vaikuntha. Prapanchika Vaikuntha is a material planet, a spiritual planet in the material universe. It's mentioned in the eighth canto of the Bhagavatam. That's also known sometimes as Dhruva Lok. And there, that Jiva, who had the body previously of the crow, was able to associate with the Lord for so long. But because he had not practiced bhakti willingly, it was just agatha sukriti then he had to come back and take birth again. But because of that Agatha Sukriti, in his next life he became a great king and he became very, very attached to circumambulating temples. Now that, in that birth, his activity was not Agatha, rather it was Gatha Sukriti. Jiva Goswami explains this. And Gatha Sukriti, or doing some Sukriti with knowledge, that leads to Bhakti. And therefore, in his next life, he went to the spiritual world, that place which is Paramam Padam, the topmost abode from which no one falls. And he went to that place and was able to associate with the Lord uh, in an internal spiritual body. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta says, as a matter of fact, the divinity actually reveals him only to himself. When the disciple hears that Krishna Kata willingly, when he hears that name of Krishna and he takes shelter of it, he has that pure receptive spiritual essence. Then Srila Bhakti Siddhanta says the individual soul is a separable constituent of the Guru. It is only when he happens to be associated by his own free choice with the Guru, he says, in a completely dependent manner that he can be on the plane of the Guru's service of the divinity. So Kayadu didn't come to that platform of, of, of service, but Prahlad did by his own free choice because he had this pure receptive spiritual essence. And therefore, Prahlad Maharaj uh, became such a great devotee and he began to meditate on the Lord. In the seventh canto of the Bhagavatam, in the fifth chapter, 
text 47, there's an interesting verse which is later on referred to by Srila Vishnu Chakrabarti Thakur and Sa'artha Darshani when he speaks about the uh, appearance of Lord Nishringadev. Lord Nishringadev appeared for a multitude of reasons and we know famously that he appeared at dusk which is neither during the day nor during the night. He appeared uh, not as a man, not as an animal, but as a half man, half lion to fulfill the, the requirements of Hiranyakashipu. He said, I, I, won't, I won't be killed by a man or, or a beast or, or by day or by night. I won't be killed by any demigods. I won't be killed by any men. I won't be killed by any weapon. And so he was killed by the nails of the Lord, which are also not exactly a weapon. And I won't be killed on the ground. I won't be killed in the air. And so he was killed in the lap of uh, Lord Nishingadev. But there is one other condition which Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur reveals in his Artha Darshan, in, in his commentary there. He says, he quotes the 47th verse from the 5th canto, from the 5th chapter of the 7th canto, which is the meditation of Hiranyakashipu, long before Lord Nishringadeva has appeared. And he's trying to kill this little boy, Prahlad. And he says, Aprameyanu bhavo yam, he says, I can see a prameya, anubhava, that this boy, his strength, it's a prameya, it has no limit. He has no fear from anything. Rather, he appears that he's amara, that he's immortal. And then he says, nunam etavirodena, because definitely, nunam means definitely. He says, definitely because of what I'm trying to do to him. Definitely, I'm going to become killed because of this. <laughs> and uh, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says that Lord Brahma heard that comment, or understood the mind of Hiranyakashi. He said, yep, we'll make that come true. <laughs> so, the appearance of Prahlad indicates the disappearance of Hiranyakashipu. You can't separate the appearance of the devotee from the appearance of the Lord. And when the devotee appears, all the nasty things in the heart, they also go away. And therefore, Prahlad Maharaj, he prays to the Lord, Yadi dashyasi me kamam vadam stom vadadarshiba kamanam hiddisam ruham bhavatastu venevadam. He says, Yadi, if. Okay, Lord Nishringadev said, look, I, I want to give you a benediction. Prahlad says, okay, Yadi, if. If you want to give me a benediction. Yadi dashyasi me kamam. Vadam stom vadadarshiba. You're vadadarshiba. You're, you're the greatest, greatest person of, give, of giving benedictions. So if you want to give me a benediction that's actually desirable, then my prayer is kamanam hridhisam roham, that within the core of my heart there be no material desires. So this is why Gaudiya Vaishnavas worship Lord Nishringadev. They uh, generally, Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they, they want to worship Krishna. And uh, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami in his Manasiksha, in the second verse, he describes their Nadharmam Adharmam Shudigana Niruktam Kilakuru Jai Radha Krishna Pari Bhavita Jai Radha Krishna Anyway, he says that the Sanskrit is not coming to my mind, but he says that uh, if you want to be with Radha and Krishna, then don't even worship Lord Narayan. Give that up. We're not interested in that, that type of worship. But we see that devotees in ISKCON, they worship Lord Nishringadev. And sometimes some of our friends, our, our cousins and, and brothers in the line of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati, they protest this. They say, why should you worship Lord Nishringadev? We should be a kantik to Krishna. And indeed, generally, Gaudiya Vaishnavas and followers of Srila Bhakta Siddhanta, they don't worship Lord Nishringadev. However, Srila Bhakta Siddhanta Sarasvati, he established a deity of Lord Nishringadev in Mayapur, the yoga peat, because there were some Dakwites, some Gundas who were attacking the temple. And we see that uh, 
Bhishila Bhakti Pramod Pori Maharaj, a very learned Vaishnava and a great friend of Iskan and a great friend of Srila Prabhupada. Uh, disciple Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, who used to do the pujas, he was in, he used to do the deity installations for Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. He also established a deity of Lord Nishringadev. And we see, as I mentioned previously, that Lord Nishringadev, Lord Jagannath, manifested the form of Lord Nishringadev initially. So Srila Prabhupada, there's different. I've heard different stories about this. We're going to just repeat what we've heard from the in the Prabhupada Lilamrita. In about May of 1967, Srila Prabhupada manifested the pastime of apparently having a heart attack. And uh, all the devotees were very, very disturbed about him, about his welfare. And they gathered together, Satsrup Maharaj writes, in the front room of Swamiji's apartment. And then Prabhupada told him, you chant Hare Krishna. And then Prabhupada, perhaps seeing, just like... Uh, uh, Narad Muni saw when he told his father, Lord Brahma, just chant Hare Krishna, Dad, and everything will be okay. And he saw, that's not good enough. My father wants something more. Srila Prabhupada perhaps seeing it, because chanting Hare Krishna indeed is, an, is enough. But Prabhupada then told them, you pray to Krishna in his form as Lord Nishringadev. And then you, he, he told them that you should say this prayer, that my master has not yet finished his work. And Jadarani, who is remembering us, he said that, that uh, he taught us these prayers to Lord Nishringadev. And Prabhupada told them the words one by one, and she wrote them down. And then she phoned up all the different temples in San Francisco and Montreal and places, and she told him this prayer. And Prabhupada Swamiji, she said, told him that you should pray to Krishna, my spiritual masters, not yet finished his work. So you please let him finish. So uh, Prabhupada wanted to finish this work. He wanted Krishna to appear. And for that purpose, he uh, requested the devotees, you offer these prayers to Lord Nishringadev. In a similar way, if you uh, do Govardhan Parikrama, at one place you see there, there's an ancient deity, ancient temple of Lord Nishringadev. Just uh, when you're coming around the, the uh, corner of Lord Nishringadev near Apsara Kun and... and uh, just from near there, there's this ancient temple of Lord Nishringadev, and according to the tradition of the Bridge Bhasis, that deity was worshipped originally by the Bridge Bhasis of Braj, and to to remove any obstacles that might be there in doing Govardhan Parikrama, because sometimes you may, I, I remember once it, we were in Govardhan during the rainy season, there was a big flood, and at one point we got confused. We, we couldn't see where to, to go around Giri Raj, and this was a forested area. And there were some local people doing parikrama ahead of us, so we just followed them. And maybe it wasn't such a good idea. Prabhupada said you shouldn't try to follow the bridge bosses. And what happened then, they, they were going on a very, very inner path. And all of a sudden we, we found we were, we were walking on Govardhan Shilas. And that, and <laughs> so that's a very dangerous thing. So. To protect them from that, the Bridge Basis, they worship Lord Nishringadev. Also in Vrindavan, there's an ancient deity of Lord Nishringadev who said that, that uh, Nanda Maharaj was worshiping Lord Nishringadev to protect his son. So sometimes the devotees, they worship in that way. And also we see that in the very Rasik Gita Govinda that uh, Jayadev Goswami is also given prayers to the dust avatars, the ten different incarnations, one of which is his famous prayers that we recite every morning in our ISKCON temples, Tavakata Kamalavade and Akama Bhuta Shringam. And these verses, Prabhupada gave us two verses of the Lord Nishingadev. This is the second. The first is Namaste Narasinghaya, which are uh, prayers that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uttered in Jagannath Puri, and we find in the, and during the Anchalila of Chaitanya Charitamrita. And uh, those verses, Namaste and Narasinghaya, are given in that uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. And then and similarly, in Gora Lila, we pray, the devotees, they pray to Lord Nishringadev to remove the obstacles for Nam Sankirtan. So in our uh, Prema Duani prayers, we refer to the Lord as Bhakti Vigna Vinasana, or that personality who removes the obstacles of the vigna. The vinasana means he takes away those, those uh, obstacles to bhakti. In Bhakti Vinod Thakur, in a similar way, 
if he had the keyboard, I, I would sing something. Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his Navadvi uh, Bhava Taranga, he's offered prayers, some beautiful prayers to Lord Nishringadev. I can uh, recite one or two of those prayers. And this is his mood. So sometimes devotees, they say that, that we don't worship Lord Nishringadev. There's no need. We just worship Radha and Krishna. And even for protection, we just worship Radha Krishna. But uh, we worship in this particular mood uh, that uh, the Lord, he's Bhakti Vigna Vinasana. He's that personality who removes all the different obstacles to Bhakti. So I'm just waiting just now for someone to bring a keyboard. I'm hoping they're going to bring a keyboard any moment now. And there's the keyboard. Thank you very much. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he prays. E dushta hridoye kama adi rupa chai Kuti nati pratistasa satya sadaroy Hridoya sodana a krishnera basana Nishinga charani mora e kama He says that E dushta hridoye, my wicked heart uh, which has Kama Adi Rupa Chai has these six different enemies headed by lust, uh, and they're always residing there, uh, headed by Kuti Nati and Pratista, all these uh, this duplicity, the desire for fame, uh -huh. Satya, which means being like a, a criminal, being very very cunning. All these things are residing there in my heart. And so Hridoya Sodhana are Krishna Rabasana, desiring to have my heart a place where Krishna can reside. To purify that heart, Hridaya Sodhana, Nishinga Charani Mura Eto Kamana. Uh, I'm praying to Lord Nishringadev that you please purify my heart and you give me the desire to serve Krishna. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur goes on. Kandiya nishinga pare magi boka kana Nira pare naba dwipe juga lava jana hai Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Paya 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 Janra Darshane Se Hare Prasanna hai boka be mora dashe kore hai Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare He says Kandiya Kandiya I'm crying and crying uh, This is why uh, this is the mood I'm worshipping Lord Nishringadev in uh, Kandiya Nishringapadi I'm taking shelter I'm crying at the feet of Lord Nishringadev Magi Bokakana, please give me this benediction hmm? that Nirapati Nabadvipi Jugala Bhajan, that in Nabadvip Dham, in other words, Nabadvip Dham meaning taking shelter, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I can do Yugala Bhajan. I can worship uh, Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. And then by doing that, Bhaya Bhaya Paya Janda Darshani Sehari, huh? all these different fears. All these different problems and anxieties will go away. And then I can have darshan of the Lord. Huh? When will that day come? He says, when that Lord, Lord Nishingadev, will show me mercy. Yadi dashasi me kaman vadams tvam vada darshaba kamanam hiddasam roham bhava testu When will that day come when he remove all the different obstacles in my heart? And therefore, Gaudiya Vaishnavas worship Lord Nishringadev as uh, Bhakti Vigna Banasha, or the personality who takes away all the, the uh, Vigna, or all the different uh, obstacles that appear before us in Bhakti. There's another uh, interesting uh, connection with Gaudiya Vaishnavism and Lord Nishringadev. Tomorrow, the day after Nishringadev Chaturvasi, is the day that uh, the appearance day of Sri Radha Ramanji. Now it's said that uh, Radha Raman, he was once worshiping the Lord, 
And suddenly uh, he, heard, he met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifested before him and told him that you should go to the Himalayas and uh, you should uh, go to that place the, the, where the Gandaki River's at. And so Gopal Bhatta Goswami, he went there and arriving at that place, which is a very cold place, he went to take bath in the Gandaki River and he rinsed out his kamandalu. And when he went to rinse it out, 12 Shalagram Shilas jumped into, the, in, into, the, into his pot. That's pretty far out. He didn't want to take them, unlike some devotees who want to go to, to Govardhan or something and collect a whole bunch of, of Shalagrams, or excuse me, Govardhan Shilas, or go to the Gandaki and collect a whole bunch of Shalagram Shilas. He thought, no, 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 this is not right. I, I don't want to just collect deities. And so he, he dumped them out. And then he went to rinse the pot again to fill it up with water. And again, the same 12 shilas entered into his pot again. And he said, okay, okay, I got the idea, Krishna. You, you want to come to me, so I, I can't refuse you. Uh -huh. So he brought those deities back, and he began worshiping them. And then one day, one uh, set, one wealthy man, came to see him and said, Maharaj, I, I want to donate some clothes and things to the deity for you, so you can worship the deity. And Gopal Bhatta Goswami said, I don't have a deity, I just have some rocks. You know, they're, they're, they're my deities, but you can't exactly dress them up with a crown and all this kind of thing, you know, with cloth and all this. No, 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 please, I, I, this is my, the set said, I, I, I must give this, these things to you. So he accepted them, and Gopal Bhatta Goswami was feeling a little sad, you know, because he wanted to worship the form of the Lord. We know from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, from the Mula verse in the Adi Lila chapter 4, we can understand, it's a long discussion to get into it, but the root of the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what is the root of the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? It's the form of Krishna. And because that form of Krishna manifested by the devotion of Srimati Radharani, J. Rupa Chinti Dasi Se Rupa Hoy, which is one of the things we were initially discussing, how the Lord appears according to the mood of the devotee, when Srimati Radharani comes in, Krishna appears in that form, that topmost form. And therefore, that's Garanga Mahaprabhu, that he wants to understand the mood of Radharani, which is based on that form of Sri Titanya, of, of Sri Krishna. So Radharaman also had this desire to worship the beautiful form of Sri Krishna. And he took rest that night, on the night of Nishinga Chaturdasi, thinking about how the Lord, Lord Nishinga appeared from a column. In the Vishnu Sahasranam, one of the names of the Lord is Stambaputra. And that's a name for Lord Nishringadev. His father is a column, Stamba. Mm -hmm. So the next morning, when Gopal Bhatta Goswami woke, woke up, he found a uh, miracle was there. He, he came to, to do a puja to his, his, his Shalagam Shilas, and he found the beautiful form of Radha Raman, that the Damodar Shila that he had had manifested in this particular form. And this is one reason why at the, the temple of Radha Raman, tomorrow they'll have a big Abhishek there, for Radharaman and his appearance day, but this is one of the reasons why there's no deity of Radharani. They have a crown for Radharani next to him. Some I once one uh, one of the pujaris from Radharaman came to Ariskan Bhubaneshwar Temple, and I was helping to take care of him, and I got some things for his puja. He had a very interesting puja. He had a silver tray. There was no deity. He had a silver tray, and he had some chandan. He would make sandalwood paste. And then he had a stick, <clears throat> and with a stick, a Tulsi stick, he would write the name in Devanagari, Radha. And that was, that was he would worship the name of Radha. That was his puja. So <laughs> they, in the, the temple of Radharaman, they don't have a deity of Radharani. They say, that, that, they say several things. That one thing is that, that Radharamanji is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Later, later uh, Mahaprabhu manifested before Gopal Bhatta Goswami and said that I'm non different from Radharaman. So Radharani is already there in the form of Radharaman. That's one thing they say. And another thing they say is that Krishna appeared in this form. And so if Radharani wants to appear, then she'll also appear. And therefore, we, we put this crown next to Radharaman. And Radharani, of course, is always there 
with Radha Raman. So there's also this connection with Gopal Bhatta Goswami and this very, very important deity of Radha Raman. Similarly, we read in Chaitanya Charitamrita in Adi Lila chapter 17, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu one day he ordered uh, Srivast Thakur that you uh, recite this uh, Brihat Sahasranam or this Vishnu Sahasranam, this thousand names of Lord Vishnu. And uh, <laughs> Krishna Daskagra's Goswami describes, Parite Aila, Parite Aila Stave Nishringe Ranam, Suniya Vishta Hoila Prabhu Gora Dam, Hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. Parite Aila, Parite means to recite. Parite Aila Stava, when he recited that Stava, those prayers, when he came to Nishinga's name, Nishinga Ranam, Sunye, when he heard that, then Avishta Hoila Prabhu Goradam, then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became Avishta. And Nishinga Avesh Prabhu, he took on the mood of Lord Nishinga Dev. And Hati Gadalana, he picked up a club and he started running through the streets. Pashandi Mari Tejai Nagare Dai, I'm going to kill all the atheists. And when everybody saw that form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in that mood, the Shinga Vesha Deki, Mahatejamoya, which is Mahatejamoya, which is full of great power, everybody kind of freaked out. <laughs> and they, Let's go, run, run, quick. Look at Nimai Pandit, what happened to him? And they all started running away. And at that time, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami describes, Loka Bhaya Deki Prabhu Bhaya Haila Shivash Kehete Gya Bhaya Hare Lila Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram Loka Bhaya Deki, Prabhu Bhaya Haila. When Mahaprabhu saw Loka Bhaya Deki, when he saw how everybody is afraid of him then, then Prabhu Bhaya Haila, then he came back to, to his external senses. And he went back to Srivasagriheti, the house of Srivas Thakur. And at that time, Gya Ghara Haila, he threw away that club. And then he told Srivas Pandit, he said that uh, this is very bad. I did this thing. Morohoya aparad. I did some offense. I made everybody really, really afraid <laughs> when I got in the mood of Lord Nishingadi. And uh, Shivas Thakur, he told him, no, 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 it's okay. Hmm? Shivas Thakur told him, Aparad anahi koile lokera nishtar. Jetoma de Kila Taran Chutila Sansahe Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare He told him that Aparada Nahi, there was no offense when you did this, when you caused this fear in everybody. Rather, you relieved everyone from the bondage of material existence. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is compared to a lion. He's like the lion of Nishingadev. Uh, in the Adi Lila chapter 3, Kaviraj, uh, Kaviraj Goswami describes, Chaitanya Singhera Nava Dvipi Amata Singha Griva Singha Virya Singhera Hunkar Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. He says that this lion-like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Singha, Nabadvipi Avatar, he's manifested in Nabadvip, Singha Griva, he has the shoulders of a lion, Singha Virya, he has the, the power of a lion, huh? Singhera Hunkar, and he has a loud voice, Hunkara of a lion. He calls out very loudly this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Say he sing na vasuka jiveda vidai kandare kama sadvi radha nasi ganara hunkare 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. And Kaviraj Goswami gives a blessing. Say, sing a Vasuka Jivira Hridoya Kandari. Uh, that may this lion, Jivira Hridoya Kandari. Kandari, Kandari means the cave, or it means that, that, that uh, hidden place. Jivira Hridoya Kandari. May, in the cave of the heart, may that, that Chaitanya singer, Kalmasa Dvirida, uh, may he appear in the hearts of all living entities. And by uh, calling out Janhara Hunkara in a very loud roar, may he drive away all the things in our hearts which are bothering us, which are just like elephants, huh? just like we, we say that, that Hati Mata or that elephant of Vaishnava Aparad, which is a very, very dangerous thing in the heart of the devotees. So we pray to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this mood. He's like Lord Nishringadev, that you please come and you please uh, uh, drive away all these very, very terrible things in our hearts. So although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, excuse me, although Lord Nishringadev is very, very fearful in the uh, demigods who are devotees of Lord Nishringadev, they were afraid to approach him. Still, Prahlad Maharaj could do that. And after killing Hiranyakashipu, the Briha Nishinga Purana describes, Lalihe Tasya Gatrani Svapotasyeva Kaisari. At that Kaisari, that lion like person, Lord Nishringadev began to lick Prahlad Maharaj's body. <laughs> Just like a lioness. Huh? She. Uh, uh, grooms her cubs as she gives a bath to her cubs in the same way. So we meditate on Lord Nishringadev in this way as Bhakti Vigna Vinashana, who takes away all the different obstacles. And generally, in that way, Gaudiya Vaishnavas don't worship, uh, we don't pray generally to Lakshmi Narayan, a Lakshmi Nishringa, but we pray generally to that personality who's a very ferocious, who's Ugra Nishringa. Who appears in our heart. Although sometimes the, the Vaishnavas, such as Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and as we mentioned, Srila Bhakti Purimaraj, they establish to, uh, because it's easier to approach the Lord in that. And the devotees, of Ugra the devotee who went to South India to engage the Stupati, the, the person who carves the deities. He requested, we want a deity of Lord Nishringadev who's just come out of the pillar. And he's really, excuse my, uh, my colloquial English language, but he's really pissed off. He's f really, really ferociously angry. Uh -huh. He's come out of the pillar because this Hiranyakashipu is trying to hurt his devotee, Prahlad. So he, he's come out in that very angry way. We want a deity like that. He hasn't even seen Prahlad yet. He's not calmed down. He's very, very angry. And that Stapati said, forget it. I'm not going to do that. He said, nobody can worship the Lord in that, that form. He's too ferocious. If you have any anartas in your heart, you make any mistakes in the worship, then you'll be destroyed. And then later, uh, that Stapati, I don't know, remember the details. I think he maybe had a dream or something, or he heard something that uh, the deity was going to be worshipped in Navadweep, in Mayapur. And when he heard that he was going to be worshipped in Mayapur, he said, okay, I'll do it. Because his guru, the, his guru, told, him. His guru told him that thing, Krishna Kuhn's telling me. So, uh, because the deity, when you worship a deity in a particular dham, that deity takes on the mood of that dham. And so Lord Nishringadev in Mayapur takes on the mood of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And although he looks very, very ferocious, he's come out with, with these terrible claws to kill Hiranyakashipu, He's actually a very, very sweet, gentle personality. He's like a big kitty cat huh? to the devotees who, like just as he licks the body of Prahlad Maharaj. And so the devotees, they pray to him for protection for the deities. That's why one of the reasons why the devotees established Lord Nishringadev in Mayapur. And they also uh, worship him there because to help us please remove the obstacles 
in our hearts. So I'd like to stop there and uh, see uh, if any devotees have any comments or anything. I want to thank Naveen and Ramananda Gopal Prabhu, who's joining us from Samachalam. He's, a, he's one of the pujaris there for Lord Nishringadev. Hey, Ramananda Gopal Prabhu, nice to see you here today. And Francisco Santiago from uh, Chile. He says, Hare Krishna's greetings. And Braja Bonita in, in Israel. She's getting bombs dropped on her head. Hare Krishna. And Natalia in, in Estonia is there. And from the very distant remote place known as Denver, Colorado, there's Brenda Sundari is there. Hare Krishna. And uh, Roma Wani, Hare Krishna. Sham Rup Prabhu in a very distant, strange place known as Boston. He comments that... Uh, about that apsara, that uh, pr prostitute, he said that he read somewhere that she became an apsara, and then she got liberation in the, the abode of Lord Nishringadev. Thank you for that comment, Prabhuji. And I want to thank uh, uh, Chandra Advaita Prabhu for taking part in Shamru Prabhu. <laughs> He's got his little parrot there. And uh, who else is here? Giri Dari Priya, Hare Krishna, my pranams. And Ujjvila Rasiga. Uh, she's saying, may the Chaitanya Singh appear in the heart and drive away all aparads. Mm -hmm. And Ajay Prabhu is there also. Hare Krishna, nice to see you Prabhuji. And Ujjula Rasiga is also further commenting. Chaitanya Chandra Ki Jai, he could change the mood of Uganashinga to Shantanashinga. And Mahasundri is here also. Nice to see you Mahasundri. Hare Krishna, I hope you're okay. And our dear friend Ananta Garanga Prabhu in a very windy place known as Mayapur. <laughs> it's also taking part. So if anybody else has any reflections or comments, you can go ahead. Otherwise, we'll f finish off. Maybe there's some reflections from the devotees here in the room today. Do you have any, anything, any prize that you won today in the discussion? Yes, no? Okay. We have Anapayani Radha Devi Dasi. Some comments. Hare Krishna, thank you so much. I was so, so uh, happy to hear the story about uh, Gopal Bhatta Goswami and uh, uh, Radha Raman, how it's, he manifests his form on the next day of Narasim Chaturdashi and how Gopal Bhatta Goswami was meditating on, on his deity, on, 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 the, on Krishna, that he wanted to worship him. Uh, on the Nusim Hachitur day, so it means today. <laughs> it's so nice to connect uh, even with our Acharyas on this day. And so it was so nice to hear about Nusim Hadev in the mood of Mahaprabhu. Oh. Mahaprabhu. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's really nice. And it's giving me more connection with Nusim Hadev uh, in Mayapur. And I have a question. So you mentioned the devotees. Uh, in the early 70s, I guess, right? They went to some person who is making deities and they ask if they, he can make this, this... That was in the late 80s, but anyway, yeah. Okay, 80s, yeah. And they ask if they can make that for that, that particular Ugra form. It, was it Prabhupada's desire to have exactly this form? I will put in the book that uh, the description of Prabhupada and Prabhupada spoke about this in very extensively with the one who... Uh, what did Pankajanga Prabhu was involved somewhat with this. Um, they, they, they sent, um, uh, what's his name, Atma Tattva Prabhu. He's the one who went and spoke initially with the uh, Pujari, the, the, the uh, Stapati in South India. I'm not aware of any instruction from Srila Prabhupada to uh, install a from Nishingadev like that. Yeah. Krishna Kuhn is giving some link or something somewhere where... Uh, Doing the long story. They will put the story in that. I guess you can put it on Facebook. Yeah, yeah sure. Where uh, Pankajangri Prabhu speaks about this. So, okay, let's because see. He was the one who, uh, uh, Pankajangri, nobody wanted Christian to worship God, they think that there was, there was this dark coins coming, and it was actually very dangerous. Um, they were attacking uh, Radha Madhav, getting their jewelry. By the way, General Libas Prabhu, amazing story about General Libas Prabhu, the, the dark coins were coming, and he wanted to protect the deities of Radha Madhav, so he took all their jewelry off so that the, the bandits just get the jewelry and don't, don't touch Madhav. But he didn't dis manage to escape from the altar and he just stood before Madhav and they never noticed him. They mm. took all the jewelry. Okay, so he, he went behind Madhav on the altar yeah. and, and the Dakwites, because he, he was taking the jewelry off and the Dakwites came on the altar looking for, for the, 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 to take the jewelry and, and looking, looking to hurt the Pujaris. And 
And all of a sudden he realized, oh my God, these dacoits are here and they're going to kill me, they're going to hurt me. And so he just stood behind Madhav and Krishna. And the jewelry, the hand. And the jewelry. And then he stood behind Madhav and they didn't see him. So after this incident, incident with the dacoits, they decided that they need to get um, Lone Singhalev because this is what Prabhupada gave us. Uh, but nobody wanted to worship Lone Singhalev. Everybody mm. was afraid. <laughs> and then Pankajangi Prabhu uh, volunteered to become the singer des Pujari, and then they uh, arranged the deity and it took... It, anyway, so we will post the story. It's mm -hmm. a long, elaborate story, very nicely told, so I don't want to butcher it. Yeah. We will yeah. post it. Okay. <coughs> um, thank you, Krishna Kaur. So Pratik Prabhu has also commented, Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you so much for the wonderful Kata. I have a question. I've heard from a Vaishnava that a devotee worshipping Nishringa Shila, if he prays on her behalf for, for Vaishnava Parada, the Nishringa Dev can eradicate that sin. I didn't get a reference, but could you help with this? I'm not aware of a reference like that. There may be some reference, because if it, it's said in the Hadi Bhakti Vilas, we can give this reference, that it's not enough to uh, get the, uh, the Kshama or the forgiveness from uh, the Vaishnava, if we do some Vaishnava Parab, we have to get the Anugraha. That, that Anugraha means we have to please that person. So if we ask a Vaishnava who's doing some worship like that, you please do this worship and, and ask for forgiveness for us, that also can please the Vaishnava. That, that would be the best reference I can think of. There may be something more exact than that I'm not aware of. Naveen Prabhu has commented, thanks to the wonderful Kata, Hare Krishna. He says, in South India, there's a few people say that Lord Shiva took the form of Sarabha and fought with Lord Nishringadev to pacify him. Does this have any reference? There's a tradition like that in South India, and there's some local Stala Puranas that uh, Lord Shiva took that form of Sarabha. Very interesting form. Um, it's like a as I recall, it's like a, a like Garuda or something, it's like a great bird. You can please correct me, Naveen. I, I'm not so expert with that subject matter. I can't many, many, give any other comments on it, but just to say that it is, is there's some Stala Purana descriptions like that. And those Stala Puranas are Acharyas, except just like here in Arissa, there's also some Stala Purana description that Lord Nishringadev appeared in the form of a kitten or a cat in uh, Marjara Nishringa, and that's in Western, uh, it's a long story, that there's a, there's a demon named Mushikasura who appeared in the form of a mouse, and Lord Nishringadev took the form of this cat, Nishringadev, to, uh, to kill that, that, that mouse demon, and he's still there today, and they worship him. So there's no mention of that in, in our general shastras, but there's some style of Purana mention. So sometimes like that. Okay, anybody else have any final things? in the room or outside online. So thank you all very much. I hope everybody has a very wonderful uh, Nishinga Chaturdasi, and I hope that, that in the mood of Jayadev Goswami, we offer these prayers to Lord Nishingadev so that we can enter into the Gita Govinda and understand Shishi Radha and Krishna in, in Vrindavan as Bhaktivinoda Thakur describes indirectly in his Navadvipa, in his prayers in Navadvipa, in his Navadvipa Tarangini. Grantarashimad Bhagavatam ki? Shri Bhakti Vigna Vinasha Nishinga Bhagavan Ki Go Prem Anandi Hari Hari Bo Vanshakopa Darubhishcha Kripa Sindhubi Vacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo